Here's a little tutorial. This is on lesson seven. That's giving us an idea of um, what you may be looking for. Again, since I can't be with you in class, I thought I'd do a little uh, hands-on demo. This is the file you should have downloaded on lesson seven to DWG uh, through there. You also need to download the Excel file, lesson seven Excel dot XLSX, and make sure they're in the same folder so we can find them easy on that. If you're remoting into the computer lab from home, Try to save these on your H drive, or you could put them back in that S drive folder, but try to put them on one of those two so they get saved. If you leave them on the desktop on that remote machine, you're, when you uh, log off, they'll disappear. So if you want to save these files, just in case you need to go back to them uh, and do some more work on them, then that's the best place to leave them. And so today we're, we're covering uh, chapters 20, 21, and 23 through there. And so we started out with some more dimensioning. We pick up from where we left off last time with how to do our dimensions. Then 21 is we how learn how to insert objects and make links and either insert them as a picture or insert things as a dynamic link, which is pretty awesome. And so we used to use this tool quite often when we're doing uh, production sets of plans, particularly for bridge information or for quantities and so forth. It's easier to put all that into Excel and have it do all the math for you. You can make tables easily enough in, uh, in AutoCAD. I just find it's easier to work in Excel um, and then just link, link those two together so that it automatically updates in your drawing file as you change things in your Excel file through it. And then finally in chapter 23 we're going to end up with hatching and again we use this quite often uh, and for different reasons and, and different ways in civil engineering and so that's a pretty important thing uh, to learn as well and so we'll go through that also today. So we're going to start off with chapter 20. We're going to do some uh, changing text. And so you, we, yes, last time we learned, yesterday, last time we learned how to do editing and with dimensions. Now we learn how to fix dimensions, which is commonly a problem, right? We need to come back and fix stuff. I also say right off, you know, AutoCAD's pretty good about having grips and you can just tag something, pick these little uh, blue boxes where the grips are, right? And then you just move it around. Right. And so you can do that um, without using invoking a command through that. If if we want to use the command in this one, it's dim t edit, right? And so which one do we want to fix? We want to fix that one, right? And we can move it around, it's kind of like the grips. The thing that the grips couldn't do is they couldn't angle things for us. So you see down here are our options, right? And we're going to choose angle as our option. And... Uh, what's the angle that we want? We want 30 degrees. So I'll type in 30. All right, there we go. So we just added that angle in uh, for that. So that's dim t edit. I'll let you uh, play with the other ones and get those fixed. Same thing up here. You're just going to move that. This one, uh, if I right click, it, re it uh, repeats that command. So I'm back in dim t edit. I uh, select this and this is what I want to do. Home is one of the options. And that's what we're supposed to do here is home. So I just hit H for home. That puts it in its home position. So that's where it was when it was originally drawn, and then someone moved it. If you want to put it back where it was, you can put it. You can use home uh, to put that back. All right. Here is uh, text. We're supposed to edit this, right? We're going to change the eight to a six. You can double click it, and you can just do it that way. All right. That's um, generally I try that first. <laughs> Anything I'm trying to fix, right? Uh, through there. The other way to do it is you can just type in text edit. Right. And what do you want to fix? You want to fix that. It pops it up. All right. I can change that to whatever I want through there. Or I can just double click it. All right. And I could I can change the, the text. I can't change the rotation in that. And so that's where oops. We go back to text edit. Uh, right. What do we want to change? You want to change this guy. Mm -hmm. All right. And here we're supposed to rotate that text. So that's going to be our um, dim t edit command through there. What's that? Yep. And what we're going to do, we want to change the angle, and our angle is going to be zero. So we can fix that through there. If, we, if you want to move it now, you can do that. You can drag this thing over. Um, you can do lots of stuff. <laughs> and like I say, 90% of the time I try the grips first and instead of invoking a command for that. Uh, just uh, don't forget, if you want more information about any of these commands, just hit F1 and you will get this box up. And we can type in dim t edit and it'll search for that. And, and do you want dim t edit the command? Yeah. Right. And now it's 
There we go. Didn't hit a command. It'll tell you what all those options are and how they work uh, through there. Right. And often it gives you another link that gives you more in-depth stuff and some other commands that are related to it or, or near it. So don't forget uh, you have that option, especially if you your book is trapped on campus and you couldn't get back to it um, through there. Google is another good way to solve solve these problems, right? So dim edit. So dim t edit is, is um, editing the text for that. Dim edit is more of a global edit uh, one. And so what do we want to type of dimension editing we want to do? Uh, we want to do oblique, right? So what are we going to make an oblique object? We're going to make that. When you select the object, you hit the space bar to select it or an enter. Okay. What angle do we want? You can type in an angle or you can just draw the angle in and it makes an oblique line for it. So I can repeat that command by right clicking. I'm going to go oblique. What object do I want to make oblique? That one. Hit space bar to accept it. What angle? Uh, let's put that angle. How's that? Okay, so there's our two oblique angles through there. Um, this one, you're just changing that to be horizontal. So you're going to change that uh, angle. So I'll let you guys do that. You can find those options in there. Let's move on to inserting the Excel files uh, through this. And so you should have downloaded this Lesson 7 Excel file. And again, you want to put it in a place where you can find it easy. Here's mine. I'll drag that over so you can see it. Here's my um, version of this. And it should be the same as you, you have, right? We're going to add this text that's inside this box in here, inside this darker line going around. That's the text that we want to add in to that. So this first one, we're just going to do a straight up copy and paste. So I'm just going to hit Control C. Like that, I'm going to jump back over here to my AutoCAD and I'm going to control V. I'm going to paste that in there. It is AutoCAD smart enough. It can just grab anything out of a Microsoft file. It'll grab stuff out of Word, Excel or PowerPoint and you can drop it right in. And I dropped it in the box and it comes in. AutoCAD likes the lower left corner for some reason. And that's often its insertion point unless you tell it otherwise. And that's usually where it likes to insert things. So I snapped it into that lower left corner of the blue box. Well, I wanted to fill the box. I don't want it just to be uh, kind of a little, a little tiny thing here. I want to be able to see it. So if I click it, now I've the grips show up and now I can just drag this out and snap it there. And there we go. And that's what we want to see. Escape uh, to get back out of the command. And stop editing. So, so I can see that was the, those were the values that were in my table. Let's check it. Yep. All right. So we had 136 here, 164, and 136, 164. Yeah. So it came in just fine. And this is a uh, basically just a picture. You just took a picture and, and dropped it in there, right? If I change this file now, it doesn't update. So this is a uh, picture in time. It doesn't change. It's static through that. But now a lot of times we like to do things automated so that if we change this this Excel file in the future, then we can come back and it'll automatically update into in our drawing once we tell it to update in the drawing. It, you, I think you generally have to manually tell it to update uh, to do that for there. There is a nice little guide that was also included in this homework uh, assignment, which is this one. So this is this PDF and it's it tells you how to link a table using Excel. And it's got nice you know, from the book. Uh, it's an extra thing from the book. It's got a nice little diagrams here and shows you exactly how to do it step by step and what each option is as you go through. So there we get all that on through there. So keep that handy. That's That gives you all the details that you're really going to need uh, for that. I'll move that back off the side um, for there. So I'm going to create a link. And so I'm in home up here. I can come over um, within then within annotation and the hide table here. So I'm going to create a table. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to insert a table. Well, I want to do an insert table. And so if I, if I start this way with these columns and rows, right, I am creating an AutoCAD table and, and it works fine, but it's just an AutoCAD object. I really want to do a smart table. I want a table that's linked to Excel. All right. And I've, you know, over the years, I've I've done AutoCAD tables only, but then you change data, particularly in your quantities or something that you want to show on your sheets, and then you have to fix it first in your Excel sheet, and then you manually have to come back into AutoCAD and fix it there. Uh, let's do it smart, right? So let's create a data link. So we don't want to start from an empty table. We want to start from a data link through there, right? And what link are we going to make? So here's our links. 
All right, this was an old one I had, traffic data that doesn't work anymore. So we're going to create a new one, and you won't have this one in here. So we're going to create a new one. And what's the name of it? Well, let's do um, traffic data 2, right? So it's a new, newer one. And now it tells me what am I linking to. So let's browse for the file. Sure. And this is in my folder, so it's easy to find. Again, that's why I would suggest you copy that Excel file into the same directory that your .dwg file is in. And so up there it is. And I think that's in the right one. It's Lesson 7, Lesson 7 Excel. Sure. Let's open it. All right. Do I want to link the entire sheet? Mm, actually, I don't want to see the whole sheet, right? Isn't that in the instructions? I only want to see the one region of it. Uh, so I'm going to link to a range. And what's my range going to be? So here's that Excel sheet again. I only want this portion of it. The rest of this I don't want to see in there. So I'm going to go from, what, C9 to O21. That column, yeah, column and rows. C9 to O21. Let's type that in. So we're going to go C9 to O21, right? And that looks good. Projections, that's the name of the tab. So if you had multiple tabs, here's my projections. If I had multiple tabs, I could tell it to switch to a different tab. Right. That's what this is for. And there is only one tab, so that's your only option there. So keep that in mind. So let's preview. Tells me it's too big. Okay, I think it actually pops up later. So we're gonna click okay. Just give it a second. There we go. And there it is, right? So it actually did preview it uh, through there. It's created the link. <coughs> it's created the range that I wanted. And I think we're okay. So we're gonna click okay. Right? And now we're gonna specify the insertion point. So I'm gonna, that means I'm gonna tell you where. All right, so here we go. And where am I going to insert it? I'm going to insert it right here. Right, so there. And now if we zoom in, okay, there's all my data. Right. And it's formatted to match our standard formatting that we had set up in Excel. You don't see the white background because that's a, that white background comes from the fact that we basically took a picture and have dropped it in from that static view. The dynamic one, it is formatting it within AutoCAD, but the values and how wide everything is and where it all lines up and the font size and all that is coming from the Excel sheet right, through there. But it's not a picture necessarily. The data is, is populated um, from the Excel, but this is actually a table that lives in AutoCAD. And you can see when you click it, you can change all these things within AutoCAD if you wanted to right, through that. So now the, the, to prove that the dynamic work links, we're going to bring this back up and we're going to change this 1.5% growth rate to a 3% growth rate. Right? So we switch these numbers. Right Now we have 186, 223. We have to save this file. If you don't save, it won't see the change. So we're saving the file. I'm going to reduce the size on that so we can see it. Oh, it didn't change. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, you have to manually tell it to change. Yeah, so it's not uh, it's not unexpected. So I'm going to come here to insert. I'm going to come over to linking and extraction. And I am going to download from source. So I'm downloading new data from the original source. I click that. And it tells me here, select which object you want to, or do you want to do all data links? Um, let's do all data links. Okay. And I clicked the wrong button. Yep. All right. Just took it a second. So now look at here. We've got 186, 223. All right. So that is, if I jump back here, 186, 223, that is correct. All right. So I made that change and this changed with it. And I'm going to put this back, put this back at a one and a half percent growth rate. Cause that's a standard growth rate for traffic. If you weren't sure, 3% is a little high. And so I'll put that back. I'm actually going to close this thing out. I don't have to have Excel open. I can come back here. I can do the same thing again. And actually, I can highlight it first. And now I can download from source. Just thinking about it. Yep, there we went. So it updated it back to where it was. And it may take a little longer because it, it's a, it's changing a lot of, actually, every one of those cell values has changed. So maybe that takes a little longer through that. But in that case, I highlighted it first and then did 
uh, download from source, so it already knew which object I wanted to update. It didn't have to ask me for it. The other way, when I invoked this without having it highlighted, I had to tell it which object I wanted to update uh, through there. So there you go. So that's uh, so that's a smart table, and it's it's automatically linked. Um, let's say back to Excel through that. The last thing we're working on in this lesson is hatching. And again, this is a pretty common thing we do a lot of, so it's good that you get some practice on it. And um, to start hatching, hatch is the command. Right? And it it may freak you out because everywhere you point, it's, it's going to sh start showing you dynamically what hatching looks like. And you may be scared, oh my gosh, I don't want to look like that, right? Um, just take it easy. <laughs> so um, point, point into this, the... Um, thing you want to hatch and so we want to hatch inside this box right that's where it said to so I click in there if you can see it there is a blue line now around that hatch boundary and that's telling you this is the area that's being hatched so it's dynamic it's activated and it's ready to go up here in the in our ribbon it's showing us what the hatch is going to be right and we're supposed to switch this over to an ANSI 32 hatch pattern and here's my ANSI 32 hatch pattern and uh, we want it in there. It is a little freaking out. There we go. So I click in there. So there, that's our ANSI 32, right? While it's active, I can change other stuff about it. And so you will need to later. If I want to spread this out, I, this is the scale, the hatch scale. I can type in two, right? So that uh, gives us uh, twice as much distance in between those lines, between the pattern through there. All right, we can go up to three. We can go to 0.5, make it a really small scale on that. One is our standard. I can also change the angle that the pattern is showing in it. This is the standard, and so it's zero. But I could throw in a 30 degree angle. I can throw in a 90 degree angle. I can do 180, All right through there. Go back to zero, do that. All right, and you can also, if you want to, you can, especially if you're using a gradient, uh, we call it a gradient um, type, which is over here pattern uh, through that if you scroll down here here's all these other patterns through that right we also have some gradient uh, type patterns that we can use or a solid pattern you can make that transparent so you can see stuff behind it if you wanted to so that's what this one up here does uh, through that and once we're done we had to we had to click close hatch creation and now it's set right now it's going to stop automatically trying to hatch everything you touch with the mouse as you go around so that's that's our first hatch piece right so over here we can do hatch again and this looks like just a standard uh, single line one right through that so if I right click to turn on hatch I'm gonna click in here first and I'm gonna go back to this one but that looks really close together right we want more space in there let's try two mm, it still looks pretty close together what about three what's three look like it's getting closer, right? Isn't that closer to what that's doing down here? Yeah, be careful moving your mouse around because it's going to try to hatch it <laughs> through there. <coughs> yeah, maybe three, maybe four, something like that. That looks about right, doesn't it? And, okay, that one looks good, so I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to repeat the command, right-click, put it in here. Well, now, doing the same one, it's at the same angle. Well... What I just showed you is you can change this angle up here. If we change that 90 degrees, okay, look at that. Now we've got the right angle in here. Whether these lines match up to that one doesn't matter, right? That's okay. And I got the same scale, so I can close that out. So now I've got the point was to have the hatches at two different angles not through that, which is how we normally would draw apart like that, just to make sure you, you can track which piece is which piece we use the different hatch. Ones through there. This one, if we did the hatch over here, um, you can select multiple regions, and so you're selecting inside the boundaries of some box, and that's how it's deciding, right? So here, it's trying to add in a little more hatch, you know, right here between that line and this yellow one, because it thinks this yellow line is another boundary. Well, if I move over to this side of it, now it's on the other side, it thinks that's the boundary. If I move inside the box, well, it's already in there. Um, so that's... Uh, I would get that. Now this one you'll have to switch then. So if you highlight it again, you can come back in and you can change that angle. I'm going to go back to zero. It remembers what your last settings were and it repeats those when the next time you fire up the hatch command. 
right, through that. And then maybe I'd want to change the scale a little bit, right? So highlight that again. I can come back in. I can change the scale. Maybe that's more like a three or something. That looks good through there. So, but when you because I selected these three boxes to start with, these three regions to hatch. From now on, every time I touch one of them, all three are going to highlight and are, they're associated. So they're all connected together. And so every time I change the hatch properties in one of those boxes, they all are going to change, right? Because they're all linked together as a single hatch boundary or hatch regions. Uh, so it's an element, I guess a hatch element that has multiple regions. And through there is one way to say that. Uh, through that. All right. So I'll let you play with the concrete one. So again, you're just going to pick uh, one of the different hatch styles. Through there. Um, this is a, a good one to practice on what you can... You're supposed to draw this little picture like this, right? So you've got this region, which is this area, this area, and this area. That's all one hatch. And inside here is a separate hatch, which is actually made up of two regions, that region and that region, right, through there. So again, you can associate the different regions together uh, through that. This is an interesting uh, one where you can, there's another command here. If we were to hatch, so this is area A, is this whole outside area. What do I want it to look like? Well, I want it to look like this, this box up here. And it's going to try to hatch that. Don't. Um, so I can... Um, so we've got that, right? And so my boundaries, here's match properties. I lost it. There we go. So there's my match properties. I'm going to match properties. I want it to look like that one, right? So it's automatically going to change it. Right? And now in here, so I'm going to close that one. That one's done. But now I want in here. Um, so it autom it added these this section inside here and that side there, we don't want that in there, right? So we want to we want to remove um, those boundary areas, All right? So I'm going to click remove, and then I'm going to click this outside boundary, and it's going to add ask me add boundaries, and we'll yes. And so that took those two out, right? So now my area A hatch is outside of those boxes, All right? So now I'm going to start hatch again, and I'm going to click inside the box, and now I'm going to do match properties. I'm going to put B, the B in there, All right? Okay, so there it is. And then you can do the same thing for C. You're going to hatch it, and you're going to click the match properties button, and it's going to be this um, cross hatching style through that. All right? Hatch out a team. Uh, show you how that works. All right, and it remembered my last style, so it's remembering B, which is a, a little bit of a crazy one, right? Well, let's change it to ANSI. We're supposed to do 31. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to do hatch editing, right? So now you're supposed to come over here, and let me pull over my properties box so you can see it. All right, now we're supposed to change this radius to 1, and you can do that in your properties, which we learned about before spring break. And there we go, and it made it bigger, and now let me change uh, this one. And it's also supposed to be a, a radius of 1. All right. Okay, so you can see we, we change it, it changed that uh, pattern as well. So it was, it, it was smart enough to change that on its own. Sometimes it's not. Let's back up. All right. So if if you have this case where your hatch, you increase the size of this diameter of this circle, but your hatch didn't automatically update with it, you can come back in here and you can do what we call recreate. And we're going to recreate the boundary. And so that's, it's ask us now, um, we're going to do polyline. It's not a region, right? And reassociate the hatch with the new boundary. Do we want yes or no? Yeah, we want yes. We're going to do that. And what's our new boundary? Is that guy? Uh oh, yeah. Recreate boundary. Polyline. Yes. So here is our current. Actually, what I like to do. I get this. 
turned on. I like to show boundaries, display boundary objects. So now I can manually, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. We're going to come back to here, hit the hatch, go back to display the boundary objects. You can grab that where that boundary was and you can just resize those manually. You just have to be careful you don't catch the wrong, yeah, like that. You don't catch the wrong, come on. We want this guy. That's our region boundary. Oh, there we go. All right. I don't know where this came from. I'll get rid of that guy. Um, so that's a manual way you can edit what that region is that your boundary was. Uh, through there you have to display the boundary it's this one set toggled so that you don't automatically see where those boundaries are but you can change them then uh, on your own so sometimes it's automatic when you resize that it's smart enough to catch that and it jumps everything out and matches it if it doesn't uh, you can if you show those boundaries you could manually edit how far the hatch goes and it's surprising how often we have to do that. All right, here's a here's a, a use. This is a definite a civil engineer use. All right, here we're going to hatch this thing to look like gravel. So where's my gravel options here? Mm -hmm. Come down. There's earth, sand. Hmm. Maybe they change what the <laughs> normal options are. That's not good. Uh, oh, here we go. There is gravel. All right. Yeah, but that looks really big, right? So let's change that scale to 0.25. Ah, that looks like gravel, doesn't it? So there we go. So we've added in gravel. These are our layers of our pavement. We're looking at the side of a uh, uh, road cross section. All right. And so when you're getting ready to show your design plans to the traveling public uh, we quite often have to do this and this is we're supposed to make this ANSI 37 so when you're you're doing uh, design charts again for the, the public it's supposed to be a one right through there they you know we often color these in and we use hatch to do the coloring or putting in this texture so they can see the difference it helps people understand what they're looking at and so that's a this is a common use of the hatching just to make nice uh, public quality uh, prints that you're going to show in, in a public display so if you have a design here and come up for this would be a road project in that case this is how we would quite often use hatching for that All right and then our, our final one is we're going to take this um, this outline of a house and we are going to hatch it to look like the picture in here All right through that and um i'm going to do a little bit just wanted to show you one uh, quick quick thing in here and so that's a herringbone all right and you also have to fill in the walls and put them in solid all right so let's come down here and let's do herringbone i'm going to click inside Whoa, look at that. And that's, um, and if you hover over any any of these hatches, it automatically changes them, right? So you can see how it's going to look through there. We have to find something that looks like a herringbone. Let's see if we can find it faster than we found gravel. Do, do, do. Hound, honey. Oh, come on. Somewhere up here. There's a herringbone. So there's our hair bone, ARH bone. And so that's saying that looks a little too big. I mean, compared to what this one looks like, that's a little too big. So we're going to change that scale. Mm, maybe a little more. Oh, 0.25. How's that? That looks pretty good. All right. And I'm going to close that. Right. So I've got, there's my herringbone uh, pattern in there. But what if I, what if I later decided that, you know what, I'm, I've got something here that's uh shouldn't be cross hatched i added an element in there how do i how do i edit uh this herringbone pattern all right if i highlight the herringbone pattern and i zoom in and then if i come back over here and i turn on the boundary okay now i can grab corners right and i can change any of those points it was using to to originally delineate oh, that was a different one delineate where that pattern was 
All right, so you actually have this piece of the wall. I'm going to put the wall back. <laughs> so, um, and so that you can edit the edges like that, and you can move things around a little bit. And just be careful, like I did, uh, you don't catch a piece of the wall uh, by accident. So that's that's how to do that. But what if we wanted to uh, do a region in the middle here that wasn't uh, in there before? All right. So I come back in here and I edit this. And first I'm going to draw that region. So let's do that. Let's come back here. I'm going to put in, I don't know what it is. I got some duct work that has to come through here and passes through the house. And it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be walled off. Not, not going to be part of this herringbone pattern uh, through there. So I want to remove that section. And so I can come back into uh, highlight the hatch. And so I'm in edit mode. I'm going to remove... All right, and it says remove uh, hatch selected objects or add boundaries. So I'm going to select the object. I'm going to remove that selected objects. It's not a derived island. Um, how about that? And I want to remove boundaries. Select object. Come on. Hmm. Add boundaries. Select objects. That one. Is that working? What's going on? I don't know what's going on. All right. This isn't going as I had practiced it. <laughs> so we need to remove Hmm. Well, that's crazy because this worked a minute ago. Remove. Let's do add boundaries. Select objects or add boundaries. I'm going to select that object. Right. And now I'm going to. Add boundaries, move boundaries, recreate boundaries. And so now I'm good, I think. Come back in here, I'm going to remove select objects. I don't know what this is. Select objects. It's not a derived island. Specify internal point. That's what I had to add the boundary. Specify the internal point. Got it. And now I'm okay. Whew. I should have used the F1 help key uh, to figure out how to do that. All right. Let's see if we can do one more because that was kind of a disaster. Let's click this guy to so drew my boundary. Now I'm gonna highlight that. And I'm going to uh, remove. I'm gonna add boundaries. Gonna select him, right? And right, add boundaries. And now I now I'm adding the boundary and I'm selecting the internal point. And once I've in, and selected the internal point, it knows that the hatch should have extended through that. Okay. Hopefully that was a little more clear. Sorry I got confused on that. Um, and that was a bonus. You don't have to do that for your home, <laughs> homework. So you can ignore that last five minutes of me fumbling around here trying to remember how to um, uh, select an interior space uh, through that. I will say AutoCAD, uh, a lot of it is just reading, <laughs> reading the commands down here at the bottom and trying to figure out what it's asking for uh, through that. That's a lot of the ways I do it. I find the right button and from there on I just kind of follow the prompts and try two or three different ways. And uh, there are uh, a billion commands in AutoCAD, so it's hard to remember them all and exactly how to use. Now, the ones you use every day, uh, you'll be pretty comfortable with. All right, so that should be a help uh, in how to get started today on today's in-class uh, assignment. And then you've got a homework that's also due uh, then later. And I need to find the stop button. Uh-oh.